Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. I am Shane once again, and after quite a long time, I am back. Got uh, held away by some stuff at uh, my job. It's going to be a really busy month doing a lot of extra work to cover for one of my coworkers. So I'm not going to be able to keep a regular schedule just for this month and the next month, which is a long time, but that should do me for pretty much the rest of the year. So... But the important thing is that now I am back, and we are doing part four of Night Cry. So, let's do a quick recap of where we've been so far. Uh, first, we played Monica, who had some bad times, found some lots of uh, murdered crew members. And eventually she got up to the deck, and that's where we left her, I believe. Then we played the Professor who went to some tiny island and found a cult. And last we saw him, he was on his way back to the ship when he saw an explosion. And so now we are playing Rooney, also known as the Death Watch Diva, Death Wish Diva, sorry, for her, uh, either her propensity to want to kill herself, or she did want to kill herself, or she has suicidal ideation, I don't remember exactly. I just remember that's a really awesome nickname. <laughs> I guess, I, I think it's supposed to be a bad thing in the context, but that's, that's kind of a bad thing. Or it's, it's kind of a, a cool thing to hear. So I've gotten back to in the game about where we were before, so let's pick up from where we left off approximately. Last time we played, I got to this point and then got killed by Scissor Walker. So, we're going to see if we can't evade him this time and uh, get a little farther in the game. And since I've had plenty of time away, I got some uh, things I want to chat with about this game overall, since I've had some time to think about it. Hopefully you will enjoy it. Hope all of you guys are enjoying the summer so far. It is, uh, I don't know about where you guys are, but it is crazy hot right now. We're looking at, uh, around triple digit temperatures uh, today and the rest of this week. I'm not enjoying it. I don't really like, really like the heat. I like the cold better, actually. Not like all the time, but, uh... I suppose it's not saying anything crazy when I say I like the moderate temperatures the best. Alright, so I got trapped with Scissor Walker and the little girl, almost died, then... Jerome, for some reason, sacrificed himself, probably, I imagine he's dead after this, to uh, keep the uh, Scissor Walker from killing us. Alright, so last time we went to the game room and there wasn't anything to do in there, so this time let's go through this door we weren't allowed to go through before. Let's see what's down here. Alright, this doesn't look good. Blood trail. Some sort of movie theater, maybe? I see the posters there. It's got that retro 50s look that everyone still thinks movie theaters look like. Alright. Can I go into these movie theaters? Maybe there will be some place to hide in there. Not that one. Not that one. Huh. This one we can. Movie theater seems like a pla decent place to hide, right? It's dark. Uh, I mean, it's hard enough finding a way around when you're actually trying to go to the movie, so... Oh, of course. Alright. So let's see if there's somewhere to hide in here. Maybe? Hopefully? Maybe not? Shoot! See any place to hide in here? Right? Is this a place to hide? Yeah, see, that's what I was thinking. Just get down behind the seats.
maybe don't crawl around. That seems like it's a bad idea. I mean, he's right there. I understand the, the desire to, but... Come on... Oh, that was close. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> so I gotta click that thing a whole lot. Make sure he doesn't discover me. Awesome. Who doesn't love quick time events? Is he going? We good? Alright, I think we're good. So, looks like we got this big old movie theater to explore now. Let's start doing that. And while we're doing that, I want to talk a little bit about the this game as a horror game. Because, as you've noticed, I am complaining a lot about this game. And if that's putting you off, I apologize. But, uh, we'll get to the question of why I'm still playing this game after I'm uh, done having my say. But here's the thing, is... You know, why was I just talking over that big, scary chase scene? And for me, it isn't actually all that scary, or at all. And there's a couple of reasons why. And I don't. I think it's a couple of things that the game doesn't do really well. Always all messed up now. Oh God! Get away from the trolley! It'll kill you. Stew. Was that the in-theater snack? What would you like, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, popcorn? Candy? Or stew? This, oh, everyone would be slurping it, too. I don't know if that's a movie. Yeah, there might actually be somebody in there, but that, uh, I don't think we're going to stick around to find out. That's kind of creepy. So, let's look at how this game deals with horror. I mean, the first of all, and the part, the first thing, and the, the thing you've definitely heard me reacting to the most is the jump scares. But, here's the thing about jump scares, is jump scares, oh, cool, phone trigger. Jump scares in general are cheap. Because you can put them anywhere. They don't even need to be in a horror game. You just need to have a loud noise and... Loud noise and or something jumping out at you on the screen. And as long as it's somewhat unexpected, you'll jump. So that's a reaction, definitely, but... You know, surprise isn't always horror. Has she just decided that... I mean, I haven't seen any other corpses or anything. I guess she just decided everyone else is dead. Sacrifice is a weird used word to use there, too. So yeah, surprise is not equal to horror. They're, they can, they're, you know, you can be surprised and scared at the same time, but it's not always necessarily going to be the same thing. So for... <laughs> for a jump scare to be really effective, what you need is a lot of build-up to it. You need a lot of tension and atmosphere, things like that. And this game doesn't really have good atmosphere for the most part. I mean, the, the locations are scary. This is true. But I think one of the things about it that I'm having trouble with is the fact that the mechanics take you right out of the game. The fact you hear me clicking all the time because that's the only way I can move anywhere. It distracts you. It, it takes you out of the moment. And that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Is I'm supposed to be crawling around these corridors with a feeling of dread. And that's another thing, too, is you want the idea that anything can happen at any time. And in this game, that's just not true, because there's a real clear distinction... Oh, I've been here before. There's a real clear distinction between the parts where you're in danger and the parts where you aren't in danger. So right now, I know nothing bad is going to happen to me, so I don't really have any reason to be scared. And there's not a lot that the atmosphere can do to change that. That's a, that's a very big problem. 
So that is one of my problems with the game. And the other problem is the whole system of getting away from Scissor Walker. And that's, you've got to find a hiding spot. But you can't just hide from him. You know, this isn't, this isn't a stealth game. They've got a couple pre-selected spots that you can hide from him. And that's how it has been with the other uh, Clock Tower games as well, like the Super Nintendo one I was talking about before. Um, so part of this is just uh, me wearing nostalgia glasses for those, I'll admit that right up front. But the other problem is in here, if you remember in the very first video uh, part we made, uh, we hid inside a washing machine and got killed anyway. And so that means there's an element of trial and error at play. Oh, this doesn't look safe. Oh, nope. And we're running again. So, there's an element of trial and error in play. And that's not interesting, because when you die in a game like this, you want to be able to say, oh, I did something wrong, or oh, there's something I could have done better, something along those lines. And with trial and error game mechanics, like with a washing machine where we hid, the problem is it's not always going to be your fault. You know, sometimes there was nothing, like with a washing machine, there was simply nothing we could have done. Ah, uh, come on. Alright, cool. Alright, gotta find somewhere else to hide. And that's, you know, that's really unfair, especially because of the degree to which we've had to replay whenever uh, I've gotten killed by Scissor Walker. You know, it's it's punishing you for something that you had no control over. And that's, that's really not a good thing in uh, pretty much any game. So, that's a problem as well. And one of the reasons why I don't seem too enthused about these Scissor Walker segments. So, the question becomes, of course, why am I still playing this game? Well, <laughs> oh, and I'm dead. Well, I guess the, the moral there is just don't check the curtains. Like what I was saying about trial and error. Well, at least we saved not too far from there. I don't think I did anything important between the save either, so I should just be able to shoot straight to whatever that little store is and see what else I can find. So, <laughs> once again, an apt time to ask, why am I still playing this game? And there's a couple reasons. Number one, I the number one thing I think is just because I am curious about the story. And you're thinking... What story? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and certainly it hasn't been a... This hasn't been a great story or anything like that so far. But I have a real soft spot for these cheesy sort of uh, PS2-ish horror games. The, the ones with a complete lack of ambition. <laughs> I suppose that's an insult insulting thing to say, but I, that's how I feel. It's a, there's, a, there's a real lack of ambition here. And so I'm, I just want to see where they're going with this, because a lot of times there's a, it gets really crazy before it gets a, it ends. You're sort of throwing out a kitchen sink worth of horror cliches, and that'd be pretty funny to me. I'd like to see that. And the second thing is, for all my complaints, this isn't one of those games that just makes you hate playing it. Because those games definitely do exist. Um, games that are frustrating constantly, games that uh, where it's not clear how to progress or progress, or once you do progress, uh, you get to a point where it requires uh, skill to a level that you might not possess. That definitely goes for me. And... Uh, so it, it's not frustrating like that. I'll say that. So if it was, was frustrating, I definitely would have dumped this pretty fast because I have a low tolerance for games like that. But so far, so far it's been pretty okay. <laughs> well, one of us was scared by that. The terror 
wonders of modern technology. Oh goody, this this will turn out well. She sounds impressed. Alright, can we go over to the side? Oh, something's gonna jump out at me in here, isn't it? Never interrupt the scissor walker when he's doing his business. <laughs> Gleaming toilet. Oh, this might be a place to hide, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. After trying to remember where this place is. See, I was wondering why she seemed so impressed about the toilets in here, but... Yeah, I guess when everything else is covered with blood, it is nice to find something that isn't. Oh, no. Oh! Really thought something else was gonna... Oh, no. <laughs> Wasn't that some other horror movie? There's gotta be a J-horror movie with a uh, hair in the toilet and some sort of monster down there, right? If anybody can think what it is, uh, let me know. Alright. So, I'm not sure what we're doing right now. We don't have a clear goal as far as I'm aware. So we're just sort of exploring this level. Seeing if we can find anything interesting. Right, is this the theater or someplace different? Oh, hey. <laughs> it's like a nursery or something? Kids play area? Sure looks like it. Oh, jeez. Whoa! What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? Um... <laughs> what? <laughs> okay! <laughs> the evil over baby. See, this is another thing I love about uh, horror games like this is, you know, she's like, oh, uh, women's magazines. I don't need women's magazines right now. Then she goes, a billiard ball. Yeah, let me take that with me. Sure, let me just cram that in my pocket, my skinny jeans, and carry it with me for the rest of the game. Oh, damn it. Well, time to see if we can hide in the bathroom. You know, I know it's it's cliche to say th these things about uh, games, just because it's already been said a million times, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. Wouldn't it be cool if you just, like, start stomping on him while he was down on the ground there? Give him a good head stomp. Teach him who's boss. I mean, he's already down. What's he going to do about it? He certainly looks powerless. Alright, come on. You'll hear me clicking a lot when she's down. I don't actually know if that helps. <laughs> but I'm not sure what else to be doing. Oh, hey, let's see if we can hide in here since we know he's not actually in here now at this point. Maybe the curtain's a hiding spot now. That'd be funny. No. Ah, oh, come on. No, the curtain is not a hiding spot. I 
could probably just circle around in there for days. Alright, where is that bathroom? Again, if you're watching this right now and screaming out the direction of the bathroom and it's the direction I'm absolutely not going in, I apologize. Oh, <laughs> So that will add to the list of things not to look at, is that big pile of blocks, but I think we do need to look at the evil baby doll, because presumably if we picked up the billiard ball, it's something we need to do then. So let's do that at least. So we, you notice we haven't actually advanced the plot tree there, which is fine, because I notice in uh, on the island just using an item off in advance of the storyline, so I think once we get in the right place, we'll be advancing it pretty quickly. Oh, I was right near the bathroom, wasn't I? I was just past there, maybe? End of the hallway? No. And I'm lost again. <laughs> Oh, my kingdom for a mini-map. There we go, yeah. So, there's nothing actually in the bathroom right now, so I want to actually go down there. Actually. So I'll head down this way to this door, which should be the nursery. Or the play area, or whatever you want to call it. And from here, trigger spooky baby. You know, I don't think it's actually intentional, but if you flip back in the video and watch the doll flying around. It looks like a B-movie effect. It looks like someone, like, actually just waving the doll around or something. <laughs> now, here's the other problem with a lot of horror games. I'm going to go ahead and bet right now that by the end of the game, there's no explanation for that doll. What do you think? This is new. I'm amazed you're still alive, Rainy. It's a very bad thing to kill people, right? So you need to be punished. Wait, kill Mom people? Daddy would lock you up in a closet for the night. But they're nice, so all you need to do is play with me. Come on over. I'll be waiting for you. It's what you want, isn't it? Yeah. All right. So she does know that girl. I know it sounded like she did in the last time we played, but I guess she does. So, I guess she was accusing Rooney of murder right there. That's pretty weird. And parental abuse? So, like another thing there. And of course she was vague enough not to say where she actually wanted us to go. So, I guess the wandering will continue. Alright, so this looks like the theater again. Hmm. So I think I might have explored everywhere here. I'll check around the theater one more time. Maybe check upstairs here? Yeah, let's go upstairs. Yeah, this is where we came when we were running. So, let's see if there's anything else to see up here. Of course, I'm not even going to try with those uh, doors with the barricades across them because, you know, we could easily just move those velvet ropes aside, but I know how video games works. You know how video games work. 
if there's any sign you're not supposed to go there, then you're probably just not going to be able to get in there. Alright, so I don't know if this is where we came in, or... Oh no, this looks different. Hmm, this looks dark. Let's see what this place is. Restaurant, maybe? A little low, a little bar. Another beer bar. Personally, I do like jukebox as furniture, but that's me. Ooh, something on the bar. Is that jukebox playing? Oh, so it is. Button-like protrusions. At least it's playing a decent little tune. Fits the atmosphere well. Well, would fit would fit the atmosphere if this wasn't a spooky bar. Bet that's another Kickstarter picture. I should look up and see what the actual Kickstarter awards for this game were. Oh, jeez. Alright, then. Alright, anything else in here? Don't think so. Alright, so, since we haven't been here, let's see what else is down this hallway. Alright, so another one of these elevators. So, we might be looking for a crew member key card, which reminds me. I wonder if we can call the uh, first mate. He didn't say if we need anything else. Nope. Worth a shot. Alright, nothing to do on the phone right now. So let's head back. So I guess if there's nowhere else for us to go, and I don't think there is. We should probably head back to the game room and see if there's anything we can do with these billiard balls. Oh, I really want to save first. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I think the charger was just at the bottom of the stairs in the movie theater, if I remember correctly. Maybe. Ah, there it is. So our billiard balls with a 5 and a 9. Don't know if that means anything. Or will mean anything, I should say. Alright. Back upstairs. So if you got any bets on uh, whether we're going to find the first mate horribly murdered or not with his corpse in the uh, game room, place him now. I imagine there must have been some reason we got his phone number. So yeah, I'm, I'm thinking we'll probably have to call him again at some point. We'll see how that goes. I might have to go back into Jerome's room later, as terrible as that, uh, an idea of that sounds. Alright. Alright. 
What do you build your table? Somebody got killed in here, definitely. Quite a few of them. Oh, jeez. So we probably have to find a whole shitload of billiard balls. <laughs> All right, so I can't use the nine or the five there. Yeah, it just tells me I can't. Oh boy. All right, let's see if there's anything else that's changed in the room. Oh, hey, somebody's dead. Oh, jeez. <laughs> wow. Oh, jeez. So, wait, did he just, like, put down the scissors for a second to go for the... Ironic Freddy Krueger dart kill. <laughs> I'm not saying he didn't. Just I would have liked to have seen that. Alright, let's... Well, now's a good time as any to see what's in Jerome's room. for us then. Oh yeah, I don't think I was able to win that one. I clicked pretty hard for that one. You might have been able to hear. Oh, but luckily we're saved up. So... Cripes, where are we going to have to run for there? It's got to be pretty far if uh, Jerome's room doesn't work. All right. Oh, starts us at the top of the stairs too. That's nice. All right. Where to go after? after finding the dead first mate because that is some unfortunate stuff yeah I guess we're probably going to have to run d back downstairs and see if we can find some place to, f to hide oh man that's unfortunate So one other thing is while we're in the movie theater, well, since we're already saved and we got nothing to lose, I want to check out that theater that we heard the crying coming from. Right here may as well, right? Worst case scenario, hopefully it'll just be a uh, funny death scene. I like funny death scenes. Doesn't seem like we're getting in there. Can we get in any of the other ones? Let's take one good look around Theater 3. I just kind of left it abruptly last time.
top. Oh, hey, there's something to look at. That's a morbid way to put it, I guess. Ooh, the floor's all shiny. <laughs> look at her hair flipping around. Hello? I feel like I just got back from hell. Did the monster get to you? I was running from it, then I fell and hit my head. Ouch. It's left a lump, all right. All right. <laughs> Her mouth. Yeah, that's what talking looks like. She being a jerk in the middle of mass murder. That's not a nice thing to do. Alright, so you can't kill the thing, but Jerome was able to get it in a shoulder lock. All right. <laughs> Such a jerk. Kelly, if it comes down to it, I'm going to leave you to die, just FYI. Sorry. I mean, I'm just saying, if it's if it's you or me, I think I'm probably the better pick out of the two. I love the way she runs, too. It's like a chicken, the way she keeps bobbing her head forward as she runs. Either that or she's constantly apologizing with every step she takes. change anything about theater one nope still just spooky crying all right so let's save again real quick Going. There we go. It's a pretty decent phone background too. All right, back upstairs. Okay. Well, that was quick. Cargo hold. All right. So I'm sure I must have passed a locked door somewhere. Let's go save again, too. So, head back to the shopping area, see if I can find a locked door. I'm going to check that locked door at the very end of the uh, theater hallway as well. Oops, no, not the chair. See if maybe that's what she was talking about. Where did she find other people? Maybe they were in the creepy theater one. No, 
Nope, not that. Pass the cart full of stew. Not letting that one go. I don't know if I checked over here, but I think this is another card reader door. No, it's just a dead elevator. All right. See if I can convince the camera to change angles. Well, that's not a good angle. Cargo hold. Where is that going to be? Let's just start looking, I suppose. That's in the theater again. That's where the old kid room is, I think. There's the bathrooms. Maybe one of these doors down here? I uh, don't think I was able to interact with this one before. Alright. Oh, those do look like nice dirty doors. Good pick, Kelly. Creepy room. Right, let's see who all's in here. Look, if phones are working, why is no one calling anyone? Still a jerk. <laughs> I don't know if I want to save the people on this ship. Kind of all jerks, weirdos. I mean, that is reasonable. No, uh, no sense in risking letting the murderous psycho in here. She is right here. You're talking right to her face. Wow. Also gonna let you die. Jeez. What? Just looking at you makes me furious. Oh, hey, creepy eyeball guy. I don't have a clue what's happening. 
if you remember, we saw in was it the second or third part, his uh, his boiling eyeball was on the uh, island. So uh, he, I'm pretty sure he knows more than he's letting on. Let's talk to you, Beard Guy. He doesn't even get a name, just male passenger. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're just not going to ask for a name from him. Beardy it is. don't remember if we met a John Thompson. Oh, is that the, the guy we took the key off before? Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, that's handy. I wonder if I can call her right now. Try the new numbers we got. Nope. It's just one of those horror movie situations where the uh, phone only works when it's plot convenient. I think so. Alright, but we got some more stuff out of that. So, let's head back to the theater, save, and uh, head back upstairs to the game room again. Actually, is that where we want to head? I don't know if anything actually important happened in the game room. Oh, decisions, decisions. Let's see. Yeah. I guess that's the only interesting place we have to check. So, let's go there. There's another thing while I'm filling this particular stream with uh, my complaints about this game, is I'm not a huge fan of games that have lots of backtracking in, it, in them. And this game definitely fits the bill. And I understand from a developer standpoint, it's a necessity. You can't just keep uh, keep making interesting environments all day long. So you've got to have backtracking in at some point. But in this case, a lot of it seems pointless. I'm reminded of uh, one of my least favorite examples of backtracking, which is the old, old PS1 Tomb Raider games. You'd throw a switch, then run back somewhere you went before, and now a door's open, and then throw a switch there, and then go back somewhere you've already been, and the door's open now. And on, and on. And so, you weren't really... Most of the time, you were in areas you've already been, not doing anything interesting aside from walking through them. And that's something we're seeing here, too. Alright. Well, why don't we check out Jerome's room, since we're just saved again. Let's see if there's anything interesting in here. Yeah. 
insect wings. That's weird. Maybe Jerome's out there somewhere still. Though I'd say that uh, raises the question of how he managed to survive. And but Shane, maybe you're saying, yeah, we managed to survive, maybe he did too, the same way. Well, maybe, but we're protagonists. He's just weird, creepy, dorky Jerome. You notice that little wiggle she does whenever she gets near the door too? It's not me, it's just, it seems like the pathing is having a little trouble getting right in place to uh, get the door opened. Alright, so, yeah, we still can't interact with that door. Alright, we'll come in here. Body. That is pretty gruesome, I'll say that much. <laughs> the vacant, wall-eyed look on her face when she's just staring. I still want to know if uh, she was just looking at him uh, lining up his dart shots. It's a funny image to me. Somebody draw that. <laughs> uh, link it to Twitter. That'd be hilarious. Alright. So, back to the shopping center. find the bathroom. Now, I explained before, I'm assuming, I haven't actually checked this out, but I'm assuming that we're going by clock tower rules. And clock tower rules is you can't use the same hiding place twice. Because hiding place will work once, but then the second time, uh, he'll find you inevitably. <laughs> I don't know if you had your sound up enough, but that didn't actually make a noise when she fell. She was sort of teleported into a seated position. Alright. Alright, bathroom. So it's not down there, I don't think. No. Maybe? No. What is this, just a uh, corner? Sad. Come on. All right. Might still be able to make a go of this. Wave to Kelly and everybody. Cause they're not letting us in. We've already been over that. Oh no! It's the elevator dead end. I did this last time, didn't I? Let's see if we can catch our breath and maybe I'll be able to fight our way past Scissor Walker. I don't know if I actually can just stand here and I catch my breath, but I know I'm going to have to... Oh, it looks like I kind of am. Did she fall down? <laughs> I didn't even notice. Alright. Let's see if we can fight our way past him. And come on... Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, that seems like as good a place as any to stop for the night. But I will be back tomorrow night about the same time. And we'll start right from the games room. 
see if I can uh, figure out where to get from there. Oh, the game crashed too. <laughs> perfect, perfect. All right, definitely stopping then. So, thanks for stopping by and watching. Like I said, I'll be back tomorrow night. We'll be doing part five. We'll be starting from the game room, and we'll uh, see where we're going from there. Thank you, and have a good night.